We're live. We're camera not wanting to do what we wanted it to. Yeah, so. there's so we're using my phone actually, yeah. and I've gone live using my phone before. Yeah. And so it says rotate in landscape. Yeah. And so we had it on landscape. If. And it wasn't working. It wouldn't let us go live. So it was something in the YouTube app. So now we're just, we're streaming in portrait. Yeah. It's, we it's, couldn't figure it out. Yeah. So. so we just, we had a little trouble with that. So thank you so much for being patient. Yeah. But we, uh, we're really excited to be here. We want to hang out and jam a, a latte. latte. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and answer yeah. questions and like, Literally, it's just us hanging out and having coffee with you guys in the morning. And every yeah. every Sunday morning, we plan on doing this on time. At yeah, 10 a.m. seriously, on time. time. We planned out a little bit better yeah, next time. This is the first one. The first yeah. one sometimes you know has a few hiccups, and that's okay. Technical difficulties. You know? But yeah. the next one will make sure to be on time. So what's interesting about this live stream is that it's going to alternate between our channels. So yeah. we're starting on mine today, and then. Next Sunday, it will be on Cody's channel. Yeah, the Groovy Guitar Dude channel, if you're a yes. subscriber. Yeah. Yeah. So at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, it'll be next Sunday. And then the Sunday after that, it'll be back on mine again. We're yeah. just going to keep switching. Yeah. So welcome to Jam -a Latte. Welcome to Jam -a Latte. Um, we actually, we have some coffee pressed here. Yeah. Um, what are we having this morning? This morning, we're having this Kauai coffee. This is actually really, really good coffee. Good. It's awesome. I went to Hawaii in November, so Michelle got this for me for Christmas. <laughs> That's good stuff. I love this. So we have it in a French press today. It's We saw a funny meme not that long ago about... I can't remember exactly what it said, but it was basically like... The different ways of brewing coffee yeah, and what yeah. it means, what it says about you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. What it says about you and the one it said for French press coffee was that you're faking, faking fancy, fancy. Yeah. yeah, which is pretty much true. It's, it's accurate. But it's good coffee. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, do you want to press it? <gasps> I would love to press it. Yeah. Can we get like, um, also we're vlogging right now. Yeah. We'll so, be. I'm going to just like move in and get like a shot. I am too. <laughs> so, you guys get to see a little behind the scenes just like for a second um, of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what actually like vlogging kind of looks like on yeah. the behind the scenes. So it's cool to kind of be able to share this with you guys. If y'all don't know, if you happen to have not seen yet, we're both releasing vlogs every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. And so that's what this is for. Here we go. Here it goes. All Whoa. right. <laughs> Look at that. It's always so satisfying. It is. It's very satisfying. Also, do you guys want to say hi to the vlog? You guys yeah. are, oh, I you guys are on the vlog. Yeah. Say hello to the vlog. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be up next Saturday, by the way. Yes. Next Saturday morning. Oh, there you guys are. I have you, you guys on my computer, too. <laughs> so I'm watching like the chat right here. We're going to interact with you guys in a second here. We just wanted to get everything just yeah. set up. Yeah, set up, get some coffee in us. We, yes. uh, we need coffee. We need coffee. We stayed up literally all night on uh, Friday nights, finishing the edit for the vlog. We kind of procrastinated the edit and we thought like, oh, we're gonna be able to breeze through it. Mm -hmm. We did not breeze through it. It took way longer than we thought it was going to, but it was a lot of fun. Um, but we just kind of like, didn't get enough sleep that night. So last night we were like just conked out and this morning we're still kind of just needing a little bit of uh, gas in the tank. Yes. <laughs> oh, it looks so good too. I love that foam yeah. on the top. Seriously, me yeah. too. Oh man. Let us know how the audio is too. We're really curious because we're experimenting with audio. Yeah. We want to make sure that you guys, you know, have the absolute best audio that we can, you know, get to you guys. My voice is going out right now. <laughs> I need this coffee. Yeah, we need coffee. Yeah, <laughs> oh but let us goodness. know if everything sounds and looks good. Um, this is kind of the first trial run. We have like a few other things we're going to do and improve on as we go along. Um, but we're, we're set up with a little, bit, a little bit different setup than we usually would, so just let us know and make sure everything sounds good and looks good. Oh, audio is good. Everybody audio says is good. audio is good, audio is fine. Nice. Perfect. That's, That's what we like to hear. Thank that you. That is what we love. Yeah. Awesome. Sound I'm going to go through fun. this chat here. Hey, Willis Pete oh. is here. Summer Strummer. Oh, nice. Image is clear, sounds great, looks great. Thank you, guys. Your vlogs were so relaxing to watch, both of you are. Thank you so oh, much. Thanks, that means so much to us. us. We love those. It was, it was fun to do. Ooh, what's your favorite Harry Styles song? Ooh, that's a good question. You go first. Mine's Watermelon Sugar. Mine's Watermelon Sugar, too. 
We just, uh, I just taught that song two or three weeks ago, I think, something like that, yeah. when we were in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And um, oh, we've just been like glued to it ever since. We both love so that good. song. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, watermelon sugar. Yeah. It's awesome. What is your favorite coffee brand? Ooh, that's a good question. Oh, I feel like I haven't dabbled enough. Yeah. Um, I mean, I... Like, I'll pick up a bag of, like, Starbucks yeah. coffee. I really do like Starbucks coffees. Um, yeah. I don't I don't really know. That's hard. I don't know if I'm, like, brand specific. Mm. You know? Yeah. Like, I really liked going to, like, Sprouts. Yeah. And um, Central Market and yeah. trying out their coffees, too. I think they're really good. That's probably what I was going to say too, yeah. is is Sprouts and Central Market, which you, if you guys aren't from the South, those are kind of um, Texas companies. They're kind of like Whole Foods, but mm-hmm. they're just Texas based. And so back closer to where I am from in the Dallas area, we have Sprouts and Central Market. And they're basically like Whole Foods is the easiest way to explain. They're just health food stores. Yeah. Um, but they have like just these just aisles of just like huge coffee deal, like loose coffee beans you can just pour in a bag and grind up yourself. And it's uh, good. And it's good coffee yeah. too. So those are, I'm the same way. I would say I'd probably answer the same way. Like I don't have any specific one that I'm super loyal to. Yeah. But I do love being able to let go and pick from those aisles and aisles. Yeah. Just those, those and they let beans. you take as much or as little as you want so you can just yeah. sample coffees and not yeah. be like tied to a whole bag if you don't like it. Yeah, you don't have to spend nice. 10 bucks on a whole bag of coffee. You can, if you just want to try a cup or two, you can yeah. do, you know, just like a quarter bag or half bag or something mm-hmm, like that, which exactly. we like to do because we like to try different flavors. Yeah, we, we love to try it. I love that you love flavored coffee. Yeah. Yeah, my mom loves flavored coffee. She loves like hazelnut, but my dad likes just strict, like just, just plain black, coffee. Just regular coffee. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, the only time she could ever make it is if he's, like, on a business trip or if he's, like, if, or if he left really early in the morning for work. And then she's, yeah. like, I'm making a pot of hazelnut coffee. Do you want some? Like, yes, please. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm, like, 50-50. I love both. Like, I can yeah. go either way. So. I could go either way, too. But, yeah. you know, I like some flavor, too. Yeah, some flavor's yeah. good. I generally do, too. All right. Let's see. What else do we got? Oh, someone said, um, Andini said, thank you, Cody, for helping with bar chords. Yeah, no problem. I'm happy those helped out. I actually have some more tutorials like those bar chord ones that I've been working on on the way soon. I've been wanting to get back to some of those, so I'm glad that those helped out. That's awesome. Yeah, that is. I saw that someone was asking, I want to find, <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh, Rick, you wants to know, what is your favorite Taylor Swift song? I know yours. Yeah, you go first, though. Ugh, this is a hard for me. I have a really hard time picking favorite Taylor Swift songs. Yeah. Um, you know what? How about you go ahead and you explain yours? <laughs> okay, you, you already like it. You already, I have to think about it. It's yeah. very hard. We were just talking about this last night. I mean, we talked about it a lot, but we were talking about it last night, too. Mm-hmm. But my favorite Taylor Swift song is Begin Again. I love it. I just love everything about it, like start to finish. It's just such a good song. Um, and actually, this is something we were talking about last night. This is what we were talking about in regards to Begin Again last night. Mm-hmm. I am not a very strong singer. It's something that I've always wanted to kind of get better at and learn and practice. Mm-hmm. And um, I just haven't really put the time into getting better at it. Um, I've actually improved a little bit lately, but one of my like ultimate guitar goals, um, one of my personal goals is being able to sing and play Begin Again all the way through. We were just talking about that last mm-hmm. night. We were. Um, and uh, it's challenging a little bit because it's a finger picking song. It's kind mm-hmm. of, it's not super complicated. It's basic chords, no capo, nothing like that. Uh, but there is finger picking in there. And it's harder to sing and finger pick at the same time. It's harder to sing and finger pick at the same time because it's there's just a lot going it's on. It's more intricate. So it you're is. doing more and you have to really think yeah. on your feet a little bit. But mm-hmm. he's actually doing really well with it. And I told him he should actually document his progress because I think it'd be really cool yeah, to share. I hadn't thought about doing that, so I appreciate GG sharing that idea because it, like, yeah, like I'm thinking about kind of incorporating that into the vlog and sharing my journey. It's, it's singing is something I'm personally, honestly, very self-conscious about. Um, I just, 
have not felt like it's a very strong point of mine for a long time and I haven't really put the time and effort and work into getting better at it. And that that song is like the motivation for me to like get better because I really want to be able to sing and play that song. It's my all time favorite song, not just Taylor Swift song. That's such a good point that you made. You said that is your ultimate motivation. You said that song yeah. is your motivation to sing and finger pick at the same time. So if you take what Cody just said and apply that to whatever you want to achieve on guitar, mm -hmm. pick a song that motivates you so hard and so much that you can't like that you can't not go after it. I like I feel like everybody has that one yeah. song that they really want to play on guitar. Think about what that song is for you and then do whatever it takes to be able to play that song full through exactly the way that you actually want to play it, not just like, you know, um settling for whatever's easiest. So, if you want to go full blown finger picking and singing at the same time, do it. Just find something. That's like I feel like that's the biggest thing is finding a motivating factor. I had teachers in the past mm -hmm. that would try to push songs on me that I did not want to learn. And I never went home and practiced a song that any of my guitar teachers ever tried to suggest or teach to me. Mm -hmm. It was only the songs that I had them break down for me that I actually took home and practiced and sat on my floor for hours and yeah. practiced singing and playing guitar at the same time. It was finding those songs that motivated me. Yeah. So I'm really glad that you said that because I think a lot of, you know, people out there can relate to exactly what you were going through with that song. Yeah, with guitar for you guys. You know, this is like, obviously we have guitar channels and stuff, so most of you guys are out there learning guitar. Um, so yeah, that's the best way to do that. That's, I'm trying to take the way that I learned songs and the way that I learned how to play guitar and the way that you learned how to play guitar, which is finding your favorite songs and learning how to play them and just learning and practicing until you got it down. I want to take that and apply it to vocals for that song to the get again because it's my favorite song and go sing it mm -hmm. and that is how you get better at anything so you know That's especially true. with what we do so all right favorite ah! Swift song spotlights on oh my gosh <laughs> okay so i'm just gonna have to like go through like just a quick like album my album so i love yeah. the first album it's amazing but i feel like none of those songs is like my top favorite mm. um the second album is very like very close and very like i feel like there might be something there but speak then we get into speak now yeah and oh my gosh speak now just speak now. so there might be there may definitely be something on speak now yeah. and then we get into red and i love red and i know red is like everyone's favorite album but i don't think there's a song on there that i'd be like that is like my like ultimate like holy grail taylor swift song yeah so then after that begins 1989 Again, amazing album, but none of the songs on there are like, oh my gosh, like that's the one. I do like I Know Places, that was probably my yeah, favorite one off that good. album. Oh, yeah. I love that song so much. Reputation, banger album. Um, gosh, there are a lot of songs that I love on that one too. Like, I did something bad, Endgame, Ready <laughs> For It. Um, yeah. And then, of course, we have Lover. Um, and Lover is just like an incredible song. Mm -hmm. But I feel like my classic, like, favorite Taylor Swift song would be, like, Fearless. There's just something about Fearless when you hear the mm -hmm. guitar part. Na, 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 yeah, na, that first drum hit. Oh, yeah. I love that. That's I, I feel like that one makes me so happy whenever I hear that song. Um, <coughs> bless you. Mm, excuse me. Sorry, guys. Um, so I feel like Fearless is in my top. Mm. Um... I really love the best day. I think mm. like that's a song that makes me emotional. Yeah. But I just know whenever I hear Fearless, it just like this wave of like happiness like hits me. Mm. And I just like I don't know. It. Yeah. My favorite Taylor Swift song fluctuates all the time. Mm. But I feel like that's a constant one that just you know. But there's also like Enchanted. Yeah. And Sparks Fly. <laughs> and you know. Yeah. There's just so many good ones. There's so many good ones. And that's the same thing for me. There's a lot of close seconds to, to begin again. That one just stands out to me. But Fearless is one. We were even jamming on Fearless last night. We did, yeah. Kind of did a spontaneous and the other thing. side of the door. The other side of the door. Oh, I love that's that one so one. much. Yeah. But those are, those are yeah. Yeah. Those, those are, are all great songs. Ones. Fearless was probably my first original favorite Taylor Swift song. Mm. Yeah. And then Begin Again kind of took the took the spotlight. That's the right. But I still love Fearless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh, do we mind if we turn the heat down? Because I'm like... I'm going to turn the heat down. Heat we can get Kona too. I feel like you guys should say hi to Kona. <laughs> it's just really hot in here right now because we have the heat like blowing. Because this house gets really cold. So then we have to like heat it up, but then it gets like really intense. Do, do, do. All right, I'm going to do the chat right now. <clears throat> Are you guys going to VidCon this year? I don't know. I don't know. We haven't really talked about it. No, we have not talked about it. Hi, Cone. Here's Kona. Baby Cone. He's like, what are you doing right now, man? He's like, I do not like this. He just got a bath yesterday, and he's like, yeah. so clean, so soft. He is. He's just mm. like, he looks like he does not want to be held right now. No, he doesn't. But he's putting up with it. Yeah. All right, buddy. Here you go. There you go. Good boy. <laughs> he's like, I'm, he's so sweet. I'm out of here. <laughs> That's my puppy, Kona, if you guys haven't seen him before. Yeah. He's adorable. He is. He's the best. But yeah, we haven't really talked about VidCon. When is VidCon? VidCon is always in the summer. I went only once. I went, I think it was like during the month of like June. Um, and it was like, it was fun. But um, I don't know. It's not something that I like feel like compelled to like go to or whatever. Mm. I don't know. Like I feel... Like, I don't know, I think I I liked going to it. It was fun to like see it and I got to like perform a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I feel like it's more so set up for like um YouTubers that are more so in the space of like mainstream. Mm. You know? Yeah. That's kinda how I feel. So it's like more so like made for that. I get that. That makes sense. That's, <clears throat> that's cool. I get that. Yeah. <coughs> Goodness, sorry guys. <laughs> Choking on this cliff bar over here. I'm just having problems. <laughs> what yeah. kind of cliff bar are you oh having this morning, by the way? Okay, so we found the other day at the store, we found these coffee collection cliff bars. I don't know if that's gonna focus or not, but they're all kinds of different like coffee cliff bars. So this one's a caramel macchiato cliff bar. Mm. And it's actually really good. Um, I love it. actually has coffee in it. There's a shot of espresso. Yeah, there's a whole shot of espresso in here. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's really good. This one's my favorite. There's a mocha one, and then there's also like a vanilla bean one or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, this one is my favorite. The mocha one's really good too. I think that's your favorite. The mocha one is really, really good. Yeah, the vanilla bean one's just all right. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's what I'm having. What kind mm -hmm. of a lar bar are you having? So, I'm a huge fan of lar bars. And I'm having mint chocolate or mint chip brownie. And I love these because they're just like very, very clean bars. Again, like cliff bars are also like very clean. They're usually, I think, mostly like organic. Mm -hmm. But I love these because they're like fruit and nut based. And then this one has like little like chocolate chips in it and stuff. And I love mint things like mint yeah. chip ice cream and yeah. stuff like that. And that goes really good with coffee. It does. You always got. We always got to like have like a bar or like some chocolate when we're drinking coffee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a thing. it is. It's a thing. We try to always have some kind of either snack or chocolate bar. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have breakfast after this. We haven't had breakfast yet. Yeah. So we like we're like we have to have something with our coffee. We can't just have coffee on an empty stomach, <laughs> or else we're gonna be like. <laughs> yeah, we probably still are gonna be like. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little. A little. Bit. Yeah, but. I did not realize I was like recording this this whole time. Oh really? <laughs> oh no. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's look at some of these other questions in here. Ooh, this is a good one. What's <laughs> your guitar practice routine? Ooh. Um, I think, so, like for me, this kind of changes. It's depending on, like, what, you know, I'm practicing and what I'm trying to, like, learn. Let me just get this, like, hair settled here. It's, like, <laughs> bothering me. Yeah. Um, so, usually how I like to approach guitar practice is I'll warm up with something that I already know, mm -hmm. like something fun, um, just something like just really light and I don't know, something that I just, I have down. I just like, that's how I open up my practice sessions. I start with a song that I've already like pretty much got down and that's just like a warm up for me. Yeah. Cause like my fingers know where they're supposed to go and everything like that. <clears throat> and then once I'm like done jamming on that, then I will pull something that I 
that is more so of a challenge to me yeah. and then I'll work on that. Okay. And that's how I approach that. So that way it's <clears> like I ease my way in to my practice session because it yeah. should be fun. Yeah. I don't think guitar practice should be stressful. I don't think it should be something that you're like, oh, I have to practice guitar. I think guitar practice should be fun. It should be, hopefully, I like. I would hope that people find it as a way to de-stress from mm. their day. Um, yeah. That's how it mm. is for me. I feel like it's just relaxing to practice guitar. Like you make mistakes, but I feel like you shouldn't get stressed out by making mistakes on guitar because it's not the end of the world. You yeah. just, you'll get, you will get better if you keep practicing. Right, you learn from those mistakes, move on from them. Exactly, and then yeah. I th you appreciate the journey that it took to get you you know, to being good. Yeah. So I ease my way in with something that I'm already like, you know, like good at. Like one of my favorite songs to jam on is Too Close by Alice Claire. Love that mm. one. It gets like my fingers just moving and like just strumming really hard. And I warm up my voice that way too. Um, and then, like I said, I pull something that's more challenging that I need to really work on. And I'll work on it for a little bit. And then if I feel like I need a change of pace, then mm. I'll like play another song. Yeah. And then I'll just kind of alternate. Then I'll go back into like challenging myself again. And I just, I kind of do it like that. I don't think it should be something that like just drains you. I don't think it should be anything that like you're working on a song and you're working on a song, working on a song and it gets boring. Yeah. So if you, if you feel yourself getting bored, switch it up. Like just yeah. try a different song. It is okay to work on multiple songs. You don't have to just stick to one song. You can mm. totally practice more than one thing. Yeah. It's the last thing you would do is burn yourself out. Exactly. Yeah. That makes sense. That's a good warm-up routine. I would say mine is pretty similar to that. Um, the only thing I might would say is that a lot of times I play, I'll start with a song. Like I have a few kind of staples, but usually I will start with a song that's relatively on the complicated side, but that I know well. Mm -hmm. um, so like one of my go-tos is Begin Again. Mm -hmm. Not super that's complicated, true. but it's just the, the finger picking. It's like a lot of movement. So it kind of gets fingers warmed up a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, I do that. Sometimes I also play some like bluesy, like John Mayer type of stuff. You do a lot um, of Jack Johnson too. I do warm up a lot of Jack Johnson. Um, I also feel like putting, yeah, warm up probably, Jack Johnson is probably my m most used go-to warm it up is. stuff. Because that's like, if you guys don't know, my favorite, he's like my favorite musician. I like draw a lot of inspiration from him. And like the vibe of his music, it just sets a good tone for just about anything. I mean, oh, it does. Like yeah. his music is just so like. I feel like mellow and like positive and yeah, yeah. It is. It really is. A lot of times when we're like making breakfast and stuff, we'll turn on Jack Johnson mm -hmm. just because it's a good way to start the morning. It is a great way to start the morning. Yeah. yeah. So kind of getting off topic there, but the the moral of the story is I usually warm up with something that's not super difficult, but maybe just a little bit challenging. Um, and a lot of times I'll try to do it. That's a song that's like a good vibe, like Begin Again or. Um, one I've been playing a lot lately is I Don't Need No Doctor by John Mayer. It's a bluesy one from his Where the Light Is album. Um, and then uh, I do Jack Johnson a lot. Like, Do You Remember, Banana Pancakes, mm -hmm. Beginning, uh, not Beginning, uh, Better Together. Um, stuff like that. Like just kind of like picky stuff that gets my fingers moving a lot. And then from there I feel pretty well warmed up to like play just kind of whatever from that point. But I usually try to play something like that. Yeah, I noticed that about you too. You usually warm up with one of those songs. Yeah. Um, and then you'll like start playing like some like maybe some John Mayer like riffs or something mm. like that you're working on or yeah nothing crazy complicated or anything like that just just stuff that gets my fingers moving is kind of the biggest thing. I see a lot of you guys in the chat. I just want to kind of like clarify something real quick. A lot of um, you um, I think are feeling like we're not reading the chat. We are reading the chat. We are answering comments from the chat. There's just a lot of comments coming yeah. into the chat and. We like to take our time and, you know, answer comments thoroughly. Yeah. So we're sorry that it's kind of taking some time. We're trying to do as many as we can. Mm -hmm. um, so the one thing that we recommend is just to not spam questions. So that way we can try to get to as many people as we possibly yeah, can. Yeah, definitely. That helps us be able to see everyone. We're not going to be able to get to every single question, but we want to get to as many as we can. Yeah. We'll, we'll definitely try to do our best. Yeah. Okay, I got one. I've got a good one. What you got? Um, do you guys have a future guitar you want? <gasps> I like yes. that question. Yeah. Do you want to go first? Or you go? Sure. <laughs> yeah, okay, you go first. Um, I love a Gibson um, ES-335. My dream one would be like the Dave Grohl model where it's like powder blue and it has yeah. the diamond cuts, which originally was inspired um, 
by the um, something Trini. What's his name? Uh, uh, uh I, I feel like I have to look up his name. Yeah. Uh, Trini. I'm gonna find it. I just like I'm blanking right now. Trini guitar. Trini Lopez. Trini Lopez. That's his mm. name. Yeah. Um, so it's inspired by this Trini Lopez guitar, and it has so instead of like the the F holes yeah. in it, it's diamond holes. Yeah. Um, because it's a hollow like a semi hollow body electric guitar, and they're really they're really expensive. Yeah. Um, but the the Dave Grohl model, like it, you can buy it. It's just a lot of money, yeah. and I like I can't I can't ever like justify spending that kind of money on a guitar. But I would love to just like play one like yeah. I, would, I would just love to be able to play one he actually gave away one of his guitars at a concert to this little like seven-year-old no kid way. yeah he brought this seven-year-old kid dave Grohl, from the like front man of the Foo fighters yeah. the Foo fighters are playing a show and so he has his like signature guitar this kid comes up on the stage he's like literally seven or eight years old and it's like he's been playing 30 years and he's just Man, like he's playing no Foo way. Fighters songs with the Foo Fighters <laughs> oh, and he so cool. gives his guitar to this kid yeah I like hope this kid knows like the value <laughs> of like like this guitar and like yeah. holds on to it forever because <sighs> so that's my that's like my favorite that's my dream guitar yeah what is your dream guitar oh man that's a great one um my dream guitar is a Taylor K24. Um, it's an all Koa wood Taylor. And it's oh. just, it's beautiful. So a lot of you guys are probably Taylor Swift fans. She used to play these guitars a lot. Yeah. Taylor K24s mm -hmm. and K26s. It's just a grand auditorium style Taylor, mm -hmm. but that's all Hawaiian Koa wood. It's beautiful. They sound amazing. If you watched one of our first videos together, mm -hmm. um, it was whenever we were in Chicago and we kind of did a little mini vlog jam yeah. session, Chicago Music Exchange. Mm -hmm. We actually played we did. those guitars there, some mm -hmm. K24s and K26s. And they're amazing, but they're also like five and $6,000. They're crazy expensive. Yeah, they're really expensive. No practical reason to have a guitar that expensive or fancy. Mm -hmm. um, I would be afraid to play it like a lot of oh times. Oh my gosh, I'd be afraid to like travel with it or oh anything. Gosh, right? Yeah. So I just, it, it's hard to justify like getting a guitar that expensive, you know, because you definitely like you do not you do not need a guitar that's like thousands of dollars. No. Like you just you just don't. You don't. Um, but it is fun to go into places like Chicago Music Exchange and just play them and get it out of your system. Yeah, <laughs> you and just jam know? on them. You know. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I always did too. Whenever mm -hmm. for anybody who's <clears throat> so this is something like early on in my playing that. I, I wouldn't say I struggled with it, but it was something that was like kind of a point of, of my early on playing. Whenever I was earlier on playing, I always had this mindset of like, oh, if I just had a nicer guitar, if I just had a better guitar, I could play this song better. And to some extent, like the, a lot of the very, very, very entry level guitars are not super well made. The action might not be great. They might not sound awesome. Um, they might not feel great in the hands and stuff. So the very entry level ones like are like that. But once you start getting up into the mid range and higher end guitars, you kind of get diminishing returns after a while. So there are a lot of very very nice expensive guitars. But once you start getting up into the mid range and the like kind of low high range of guitars, you start getting a little bit less for your money. Yeah, basically. that's true. Um, and so you know I would consider like we've got our breed love. Well, I've got my breed love back here. Um, and this is the same breed love that uh, Michelle and I both have. Yeah, literally and same exact one. Literally the same exact guitar, and that's like probably like a mid to like low high range guitar as far as price goes and stuff. And it's an amazing guitar, and I don't feel like I would ever need anything nicer than that. Yeah. You know, yeah. Would I love a Taylor K twenty four? Totally. Um, but you don't really necessarily like. This is kind of like off on a little bit of a tangent, but like. Mm -hmm. I just always felt whenever I felt restricted by my gear whenever I was in my earlier on playing. And mm -hmm. I've learned as time goes on that that is much less important than yeah. it seems like it is maybe in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, I kind of learned that like, it took a long time for me to be like come to grips with that. Yeah, it's it's really come down to working with what you have. Like yeah. yeah, you might get a guitar that that is handed down to you that, you know, maybe doesn't have the best action. You know, needs a little fixing up and love. Mm -hmm. But you can literally, you can take guitars in. If you don't know how to, like, do it yourself, you can take it in to a luthier 
um, guitar tech and you can have them set it up for you so that mm -hmm. way it's comfortable to play. So if you ever get a guitar handed down to you and it just doesn't feel comfortable, um, you know, pressing down on the strings, it might be because maybe you need to, you know, put some new strings on there that are a lower gauge that are more comfortable, but maybe yeah. you also need your action adjusted so that way um, their strings are closer to the fretboard. And that's like a, that's a big, big thing. That is, um, yeah. It's huge. So looking into stuff like that, but if there is like a dream guitar that you want, sometimes people sell crazy expensive guitars and they, yeah. they don't know, like I feel like some people don't, like are not aware of what they're selling. They're yeah. just like getting rid of this guitar that maybe like a relative like passed away and so they like have this guitar, but they don't know the value of it. Yeah. And sometimes you like find a, like a diamond in the rough mm -hmm. and you like get lucky and you come across a guitar on Craigslist or yeah. like some other like, you know, site. So. You can look around and sometimes you find those like expensive guitars. Like yeah. I saw Willis Pate commented that he found like a used, um, I think a vintage like ES uh, 335. Oh really? It's really cool. Yeah. That's, um, yeah. I have to just build on that. Yeah. Always check Craigslist. If you feel safe and comfortable doing so, yeah. always check like Craigslist and like local listings mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I bought almost every single guitar I've ever owned off of Craigslist, um, including that Breedlove, this Breedlove right here. Um, I, I got this off Craigslist in a trade and That's it was, amazing. um, I mean, I would never get rid of this guitar. It was one of those yeah. that I got in a Either trade. I, and, I'll never get rid of my Breed Love. My Breed yeah. Love is like, it is for life. <laughs> yeah. This is the only guitar I own that I will never, ever part ways with. Like it's, uh, and I got this in a trade and I got a really, really, really good deal on it too. Um, I definitely got the better end of the trade and, uh, <laughs> you know, just, just, just to say that, but, um, you know, I just, if you feel comfortable and safe doing so, definitely check Craigslist and stuff yeah. as far as like looking at, you know, kind of new guitars or dream guitars or whatever else. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times you can find just really, really good deals. That's true. Yeah. I saw a question popping up a lot. There's some stuff about like Shawn Mendes and I think mm. they're wanting to know what our favorite Shawn Mendes song is. Ooh, okay. There's That's a lot a of really good Shawn Mendes songs. Yeah. Um, there's nothing holding me back comes to mind. I really love that song, but I also love something big. Ooh, okay. So those are That's my a like those are my two favorite Shawn Mendes songs. Yeah. Cause something big is like it puts me in like a positive, like upbeat mood. If I know I gotta get something done that day, sometimes I'll put on something big. Something big and na 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 mm. Ah, love it. It's just wow. like so upbeat. Mm. It's like a it's it almost feels like a party. And then there's nothing holding me back. Obviously, it's like more of like a romantic type song, but it's yeah. like upbeat and it's like a, it's got this like chasing kind of like guitar. It does the guitar that's almost oh, so cool. Oh, it's so good. That it's is. so good because there's a little bit of like noodling, but then there's like that electric guitar that comes in, yeah. and it has like a rocky like chasing kind of vibe, and it's like really flirty, and I love it. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, okay. that's a great song. Um, I feel like I feel like Shawn Mendes. Before I say mine, just to kind of build on that, I feel like Shawn Mendes. Is a little bit underrated when it comes to his guitar parts for his songs. Um, I think people like recognize that and see that he's got some cool parts, but I think that especially in his most recent album, I think he's got some really solid guitar parts in yeah. there. Um, I, I, I don't know. I just I did a lot of tutorials from his last most recent album. Mm -hmm. Like I did almost every song on the album, and I definitely didn't realize. Before, and it was almost all requests too. Mm -hmm. Almost the whole thing was just songs that you know my subscribers requested, you guys, a lot of you guys probably requested. And I like through doing that, I, did, I didn't realize how awesome his guitar parts were wow. until I did that. And I was like, wow, like it blew my mind. Like in my blood, there are like three different guitar parts mm -hmm. I think that I taught in that video. Cause yeah. there's that slide, mm -hmm. and then there was like, it isn't in my blood. Yeah, big chords. Yeah, big chords. And then there was like a strummy, like acoustic part too. Mm -hmm. So like kind of like three different guitar parts yeah. in that song, which is, I mean, a lot of pop songs don't have that. Right. You know? For being like mainstream pop music, yeah. you know, that Shawn Mendes is like, that's, I definitely didn't realize back then. Like I was like, it, it caught me off guard how much he has awesome guitar music yeah. and his, you know, guitar stuff in his songs. I mean, and I, I think it's also really cool that like him and John Mayer, yeah. like, you know, like played live together. Mm -hmm. There's a song um, by John Mayer that we both love that he did in his live album. What was it called? In the in, light. In your atmosphere. Oh, I was talking about oh, the, the album. Oh, the album is where yeah. the light is. Yeah, but the song is in your atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I think 
Sean was a very big fan of that song because yeah. they like I think he was probably like I really love this one because they like played that live and I forgot which which uh, Sean Mendes song that they did oh, but they like yeah. blended the two songs together yeah but in your atmosphere it has this amazing guitar line in it just yeah. like oh it's oh. so beautiful like it's amazing amazing if oh. you've never heard it before go give it a listen even if you're not a huge John Mayer fan yeah. In Your Atmosphere by John Mayer from the Where the Light Is album. It's a live album, and that whole album is incredible, but that song, if you love acoustic guitar, you have Woo! to hear it. It's, it's just an incredible song. It's so good. Like, I'm just getting chills just thinking about oh, it. I know. If there's any John Mayer <laughs> song that I want to learn how to play, it's that one. Yeah, it's in a weird tuning. Um, you can play it without being in a weird tuning, kind of, but not like exactly the same. Uh, I've never even, it's one of my all-time favorite songs, and I've never actually learned the weird tuning on it. But. Wow. Yeah. Anyways, to wrap back around, get back to the question. Um, my favorite Shawn Mendes song is Where Were You in the Morning? Um, oh, I don't think I've heard that one. So that's on the new album. And the reason that I like that song so much is because it feels very John Mayer inspired. Oh. It's, it's got like a, cool. yeah, like the intro riff that has this like, like it's got that's this like cool. kind of little intro thing that feels like John Mayer's kind of tone a little bit. And, um, I, I love that song. There's a couple wow. others that I really like by him, and I think that one would have to be my favorite because it just feels That's like so a cool. mix of their two styles. It feels inspired by John Mayer, but it still feels like a Shawn Mendes song. Wow. It's a pretty song, too. But I'm sure he picks up a lot cool. of inspiration from him. I yeah. mean, shoot, they probably like jam together behind the scenes and all of that. Oh, yeah. I, I'm sure John looks down at Shawn as, you know, like someone that he can like mentor mm -hmm. kind of thing because like i mean you see like john just doing like casually just like hops on instagram mm -hmm. and starts teaching guitar and he's it's not like he's making any money from it or yeah. anything he's, he's just, just hanging like, out he's, he's just... hanging out i think it's yeah. just for the love of it and yeah. that's really cool it is it is john mayer he's he's a he's a funky dude but he's he's a cool guy like he's a really cool guy i think he's a really positive he hasn't always been but i think now he's a really positive light in the guitar community i think he became a lot more self-aware mm -hmm. as he got older because I yeah. saw like an interview where he admitted that he had like this ego um like he was an ego addict ego, or something. yeah that was the that's all yeah. That interview. yeah but um I think I think more recently I've like really come to like love him more personally mm -hmm. and so he's he's really funny he is he's hilarious if you haven't seen he does a uh I don't know if he's doing it right now, but he does this thing um, John Mayer does on his Instagram, and it's a, it's like a uh, like a live thing he does once a week. Um, and it's, it's like a part of a series, and it's called Current Mood. And he'll have like special guests on and kind of sit like this with like Shawn Mendes or like uh, Dave Chappelle is on there a lot. Or I'm already telling him about this. It's amazing. It's so funny. It's like him hosting his own little talk show. But just on Instagram. <laughs> and so, so cool. it's it's amazing. So definitely check that out. It's on his Instagram. And I, I don't know if he's doing it right now or it's, he does it like, you know, he'll do it like in proper seasons. So okay. like he'll be like, you know, he'll do a season that's a couple months long and he'll take a little break and then do a season that's a couple months long. Oh, nice. Yeah. And he'll do it like once a week. It's that's it's great. Awesome. It's amazing. A lot of cool guests too. I think Sean Mendes has been on there. Wow. Yeah. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, sorry if we 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 want to thoroughly answer your questions. Sorry if we're not in the comments a ton. We want to like make sure that we're like, you know, I don't know. We're just talking, chilling, answering questions and stuff. So doing our best to get to as many of them as we can. Mm -hmm. How long do you guys practice per week? That's a good one. That is a good one. Yeah. Do you have, if you have an answer, feel free to go ahead. Yeah. Um. So I, that's a little harder for us to answer specifically. I think because guitar is kind of in a way our job um and so you know we'll usually usually we'll sit down and jam for a little bit every day mm -hmm. um yeah. you know we don't really have a set amount of time uh for me like i try to make sure that i have a guitar in my hands for at least minimum like 15 20 minutes a day mm -hmm. um but if it's a day that i'm teaching if it's a day that i'm filming if it's a day that you know most days it ends up being more than that. Yeah. It's a matter of just like, if I'm really busy and I don't have time or if I'm not at home to pick up my guitar, I will make sure that I pick up my guitar for about 15 yeah. minutes and just play it, just put it in my hands. Um, but usually it's quite a bit more than that. Usually it's closer to like an hour, two hours, which is not realistic for most people. I can just do that because it's my job. Um, but I always recommend if you're kind of, you know, asking, 
I always kind of tell everybody, like my brother is learning guitar right now. He's kind of trying to pick up on guitar. Yeah. I let him borrow my first guitar that I ever had. It's a little old Fender um, guitar. And, uh, you know, I've kind of been trying to like help give him a little bit of advice on how to get started. And I'm like, man, just mm -hmm. if you can pick up your guitar for five minutes, yeah. if you can pick it up for five minutes a day, just getting it in your hands, even if you don't play much, even if you just tune it, mm -hmm. just getting your guitar in your hands for five minutes that will do wonders for your playing. Especially when that five minutes turns into 10 minutes yep. and then so on. Exactly. You know, it builds up. It builds so that's, up. That's great advice. Yeah. Um, what about you? For me, it really is like, it's pretty much almost the same answer as like what Cody just said, because it can get kind of like blurred. Mm -hmm. I think for us, what, like what actually is practice and like what is for our like tutorials and everything. Yeah. Cause we do practice for our tutorials. We don't, we don't just mm -hmm. sit down, you know, like yeah. I, don't, I, I feel like sometimes people think we just sit down and we just knock out a video and that's very much not the process. No, we no, actually no. do have to sit there and listen to the song multiple times and yeah. figure it out. And once we figure it out, then it comes to practicing it so that way it's it flows right and you know we i i know for my end at least because i sing with my tutorials mm. i try to make sure i at least decently get the lyrics down because i like to sing a little bit with there because i think that yeah. that'll help sometimes um for people to hear the lyrics so they know like you know maybe where i am in the song yeah um so i know sometimes it takes me a little bit longer just to like get some lyrics down but that's the process of like that part at least is we do practice for our videos because yeah. you know we want to put out a tutorial where we actually like we know what we're playing right. um and that like i i have found you know that learning songs for videos has depending on the song there might be a song sometimes like out of my comfort zone like despacito was one of those videos yeah. that like i could have totally just like I could have been like, oh, you know what? I'm not going to do that one because that's like that first part is really, really Fast. hard. You know, I'm just going to like pass on this one. But I didn't because I was like, you know what? I'm going to challenge myself. I'm not I know I'm not going to be up to speed on it. Like, I'm not going to be perfect. Yeah. But I do want to try this. Like, that was my mindset. I was like, I want to try this. I want to at least attempt it. If I look like a goof hmm. because I can't play it up to speed. So be it. But if the video at least helps teach people the part, yeah. even if it is more so slowed down, if I can at least teach it to someone and if they want to practice it and take it and run with it and work it up to speed, then I did my job. Mm. And so I just, so, and for me that like that challenged me and that was practice. Like I sat there and I practiced that so much. Like I spent a lot of time practicing that and I'm, I still didn't like get it like that fast, but um, that's one way where I'll get guitar practice in, but then there's stuff I practice for myself. Um, and I don't really have like a set amount of like time, like hours or whatever, but I do try to practice as often as I can. And I try to make sure I intentionally practice things I want to practice for me and not just practicing stuff for like the videos. I try to, and that's hard sometimes cause mm -hmm. I get caught up in like what I want to teach for videos, yeah. but I, I need to get better. It's something I have to work on. I need to get better at practicing things for me. I don't make enough time for that. I'm gonna be like super like transparent about that. I learn a lot of stuff for videos and I think sometimes that holds me back as a guitarist because I don't make enough time to grow the skills that I wanna grow because there's, there's so much more I wanna do and I just need to get better at like making the time to sit there and practice those things because mm. you know, like they sometimes get put to the back burner and I love teaching. It's like, it's hard cause I, I love teaching you guys, but you know, if I want to teach more then I need to like grow what I can do. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That makes a whole lot of sense. That's, that is one thing. And I feel the same way too. There's times where like I spend a lot more time, even last night we were talking about, we wanted to have like some dedicated time where we just sat down and just jammed just for us. So we mm -hmm. jammed on Fearless. You know, that's a song that we're like, we, I think we both taught that song already. Like we're not gonna like actually, you know, make another new video on it or anything like that. And mm -hmm. it was just a jam on a song that we just wanted to jam on. Just yeah, to, and it just was to, fun. It was so fun. Cause we just, uh. it wasn't, it wasn't like us trying to like learn it or work out parts mm -hmm. or whatever. We were just jamming. Yeah. Um, and just taking time to just, hang out and jam. And so with that, and also trying to do things that push us forward individually mm -hmm. in our guitar journeys outside of what we do on YouTube, um, 
yeah, like it's, it's easy for us to get kind of caught up in what we're doing on here and not really spend as much time dedicated to getting ourselves better. I feel the same thing. So mm -hmm. I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Yeah, so they're saying I feel like I feel you with having to really sit down and really figure out these songs. That's yeah, that's something also that we were talking about that we hope with like this vlog that we're doing this yeah, weekly vlog. Yeah, yeah. We hope to kind of show you guys a lot of the behind the scenes of what actually goes into this making this. It's not yeah. there. Sometimes we feel like there's this major perception that we just sit down and play guitar and we sit down in front of the camera, play the song, and that's it. That's all we do. Mm -hmm. uh, we have this perception that maybe that that's what some people think about how we do our stuff and that's very much not the case every song has a lot of prep work that goes into mm -hmm. it um some more than others depending on the difficulty of the song and like michelle is saying she usually sings in her tutorials i don't i usually just kind of run through the guitar parts really quick and do overview and then that's it um so hers take a little bit more prep work than mine do but we still both put a lot of work up front before we even think about sitting down in front of the camera that and is very true we're hoping to kind of show you guys a lot of that during the vlog and kind yeah. of share that we make notes like cody actually has like a notebook over there he yeah. like specifically will write down like every little detail if there's a capo the the tuning yeah the chords the strumming i do the same thing but i do it on my phone yeah um so we both do note taking yeah just a little quick example of what that yeah. actually this is a page full of notes from songs that i've recently taught i don't know if that's in focus or not but those are all songs that i've either am going to teach or are about to teach or uh, have taught or whatever. And it's just a quick little mm -hmm. kind of outline. And Michelle does the same thing but on yeah. her phone. And so we'll sit down and we'll actually get our guitars and we'll work through each song to find the chords, find the picking mm -hmm. and, you know, learn it by ear. We'll write all that down and then we practice it until yeah. we have it down good enough to actually sit down in front of the camera and share it with you guys. Exactly. Because... I don't, I don't know about like kind of, you know, your history when you first like started making videos, but I know for both of us, for a fact, it's a very learn as you go kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know, teaching guitar on YouTube. Cause we both started like years ago. Yeah. Um, my 11 year YouTube anniversary was actually <laughs> yesterday. So yeah. I started posting videos 11 years ago, which is nuts. <laughs> Um, Super cool. I, I started out with just covers and then those covers turn into requests for teaching a lot of those songs I was covering, but I had no idea how to make a tutorial video yeah. back then, and I had no idea there was anybody even teaching guitar. I think the only people that were on um, YouTube teaching were like Marty and Justin. Mm -hmm. Those were like the only two people at the time, and I had like I'd never seen any of their videos. And someone asked me to teach "Crazier" by Taylor Swift, mm. and so I did this like ten-minute video, like just no cuts on my webcam, and I'm like. So before it, like, t like two and a half minutes before I even get into teaching the song, I'm like, so here's a guitar strap and here's a guitar <laughs> pick. And then this is this string and this string and this string. I had no idea how to make a tutorial. Yeah. So then people would comment things and they'd be like, okay, well, I know what those things are. I just want to learn the song. So a lot of what we do, we is just based on like the feedback that we yeah. get from you guys, how to make our videos. And then. You know, I've had videos where like I actually like left out a part of the song or something like the the bridge was different and I mm. like didn't realize it for some reason. And so, you know, we that's why we're like so organized with yeah. it now that we make sure to like really like take our time, like make a set of notes so that way we don't yeah. forget to say something in a video. We don't yeah. leave a part out because, you know, our goal is to help you guys and to do our best job yeah. doing that. Exactly, make everything as clear as possible and, and as concise as possible so we're not just kind of rambling along. We want everything to be presented to you guys mm -hmm. in a clear and easy to understand way. That's the whole yeah. purpose of what we do is to help you guys. Exactly, and in the vlogs, you'll get to see more yeah. of that. You'll get to see like the behind the scenes process. Yeah. I'm sure we'll share quite a bit oh, of yeah. that. So it's actually like learning the songs yeah. and, and practicing them and preparing them for you guys. Yeah. I think that's going to be a lot of fun to share. Yeah. I'm really excited about that. Yeah. Um, I think that's that's going to be really cool to like have people see us like actually like practicing the songs and yeah. Yeah, breaking them down and stuff like that. Cause it's, it is it is a lot of prep work, but yeah. it can be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like there's times where we'll learn songs that we like love, but then there's times that we learn songs that we're like not as crazy about, but we know that you guys want to learn. And so yeah. it's just like a mixture. And so I think, I think it's going to be a lot of fun to like yeah. share that like whole process with them. I think so too. I'm yeah. looking forward to that kind of peek behind the scenes for you guys. It's, it's, there's a lot that goes into it and I'm excited for us to both be able to share that with y'all. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Let's see. All right, we're just kind of taking a look, scrolling through some of the comments here. I think we are going to like probably wrap it up within the next like few minutes. Because mm -hmm. um, we're probably going to make some breakfast, get yeah. some like, food in our stomach. We're but we'll, we can answer a couple more questions. Yeah. Can Cody play guitar without a capo? Yes, I can play guitar without a capo. <laughs> okay, to address this very quickly. I always try to play with a capo when possible because it usually makes the song easier to play. For beginners. I, for actually. beginners, yeah. exactly. I try to direct all of my lessons for beginners. It's like I want I want my lessons to be as simple for the most part that anybody who's even in their first couple of weeks playing guitar, they can pick it up, follow my lesson, and be able to play the song. Mm -hmm. Most songs. Depends on the song, but most songs. So whenever I play with the capo very frequently in my videos, which I do, um, the purpose and the reason behind that is making the songs as beginner friendly as possible. That's yes. not the only reason to use a capo, but it does help a lot. It does help a lot. And the thing is, like, there are are a lot of people that will look down on using a capo because a capo does make things easier. But mm -hmm. here's the way that we like to look at it. This is just our perspective and our view on things as teachers. Our goal is for anyone wanting to learn guitar, we want the process of getting into it mm -hmm. to be as fluid and as less intimidating as possible. And using a capo helps make it a little bit more accessible because the chords are easier. Yeah. And just getting, starting off with bar chords for beginners, just like, I don't think that's the answer. And that's no. just like, that's our, that's our opinion yeah. on that because it's, it's very difficult. Like to get that dexterity down as a beginner is just like, it, guitar is already painful starting out. Your fingers are going to be in pain right. and starting out with bar chords, I just don't think is a really good way to start out. I just don't, no. I think it's something you have to work your way into. Yeah. So that's why we suggest open chords and using a capo. It it's really does help make it beginner friendly. Mm -hmm. And then after that, once you get into like being more comfortable on the guitar and you know playing um, a wide range of chords, and you can take that capo off and like you know work on doing more bar chord shapes and things like that. It's just to open the doors up and just to make it as accessible as possible. And yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with using a capo, even after being a beginner. There's nothing wrong with using a capo. No, that's something I was about to say too, too. Is some of the best guitarists in the world, some of the best musicians in the world use capos all the yeah. time. Capo is not meant to be like a handicap. It's not training wheels. Yeah. It's not guitar training wheels. A capo is a tool. It is. And in the beginning, using a capo a lot helps because it does make the chords more accessible. It helps limit the bar chords mm -hmm. that you have to play in songs. But Keith Urban uses capos. Mm -hmm. John Mayer uses yeah. capos. You know, some of these artists, you know, Shawn Mendes, they get, a lot of guitarists use capos. And they all also the time. use it for a quick key change so that yeah. way they can fit a key that fits with their vocal range. Because not everybody can sing a song, you know, in like, I don't know, some like, I don't know, like maybe it's in the key of C. Maybe they yeah. have to sing it in like the key of F or something like yeah. that. I don't know. But like using a capo for a quick chord change if you're a singer is like an e like it's an amazing tool. It just makes it right. so easy, and that way you can just find you know a range for you to sing in. Like that's something I definitely use the capo for a lot. But yeah, like it's it's something that we both do in our tutorials a lot. And people are like, can you do a song with like no capo and stuff like that? Can you yeah. do more like no capo tutorials? And sometimes we'll provide like the alternate like chords yeah. you know in the description or something like that. But we really just we realize that like there's a lot of you know people at different levels watching our videos yeah but we want to be very hyper aware that there are going to be people that it's like their very first day playing guitar exactly and so we want to make it as approachable as possible because what we don't want is for somebody to watch one of our videos and be like completely turned off by learning guitar because it seems like it's really 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 hard and painful and i know you could say like well, you know, they should put more effort in and practice, but like yeah. if we can give them the tools to make it easier for them mm -hmm. to get started. And then after that, they can just like build on that and yeah. get better. I think that's just that at least that's like, that's our approach. And right. like, you know, like everyone's going to have different opinions and that's okay. That's okay. Um, but we just, we try to come with a, a positive mindset towards like using a capo and it's a tool. 
Um, it's not it's not a handicap, and mm -hmm. there's there's nothing like I, I just don't see a, like a negative. I just I can't yeah, see. There's a no negative value. to using a capo. Yeah. It's it's just another it's a it's the same. I would put it in the same category as a pick. It's not a handicap. It's not training wheels. It's not you know. There's nothing negative about using a capo. I, there shouldn't be a negative perception around it. It's just a tool. Um, it's just a tool to make guitar easier. And it's also a tool to change keys, like Michelle was talking yeah. about. It's not, there's, for some reason, there's there's some people that kind of spread around that it's negative or not good to use a capo. That is not the case. It's yeah, just a so tool. Yeah, don't, so don't believe those things that you hear. Yeah. Um, it is your choice whether or not you want to use a capo. And don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. If yeah. you're using a capo and someone says that it's, like, that it's just, you know, lame that you're using a capo, yeah. don't listen to that. You, you yeah. it is your guitar journey. It is you practicing that guitar, and if you so choose to use a capo, use that capo. Yeah. Like you, like don't let anyone tell you how you should and like should not play guitar. Like obviously there are some things, you know, some guidelines I guess that you should follow. But like for the most part, there, geez, there's like a lot of legendary guitarists that like did things completely like the opposite way yeah. of like you know, how things are taught. Yeah, for sure. And they're, like, they're, they're, guitar they're legends because of how they approach the guitar. Like, yeah. they broke the rules and they, like, made it their own. So, just don't listen to people that have, like, negative vibes towards capos. You you yeah. play how you want to play, capo or not, you know? Right. We're not going to judge. No. You know, no. like, we, our goal is for people to just, like, you know, have fun learning the guitar and that's it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Exactly. That's in its simplest form what we're here to do is help you guys be able to have fun learning guitar, especially the people who are just starting out. That's what we exactly. kind of direct our lessons towards. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, what do you think? Should we let, maybe answer one or two more quick ones? I say we pick one more question. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. Isa just joined us. Oh, no way. Oh my gosh, oh, she, right at the very end. Yeah, she's like, she agreed, absolutely. It's our own journey for fun. Yeah. Isa's such a great sure. example of this too. Isa was part of my Summer Strumming series last summer. And it was amazing watching her progression because um, Isa, if you don't mind me like being, you know, kind of open and saying this, but um, she, I saw a lot of growth in her over the summer. She's someone who really, you know, was kind of like, I think shy and reserved about like posting like anything you know on the internet that showed her you know not being perfect you know at something mm. on guitar yeah but then she just had fun with it like I think all of us posting practice videos together really encouraged each other and showing like you know our flaws and our mistakes and Issa became a huge 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 light to everybody in that community yeah. just like her positivity and like her just it, it's just amazing like I just loved I loved watching her over the summer like just watching her grow and now she has like a piano Instagram where she's practicing and she's having fun with it so I'm yeah. really proud of her and um, that was really cool to see so she's been awesome just super yeah. involved in the community yeah. and, and just love seeing her post and, and yeah just yeah she, keep it she up. has she's like the awesome. sweetest smile too I yeah. just love it <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, I think I've got a good last question. Oh, now. yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, um, oh, I lost it. Hold on, it went away. Uh, where'd it go? All right, what are your favorite chords? <gasps> That's a good one. I like that one. It's a good question I to end on. I love that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get... A guitar. Yeah, yeah. So you can kind of a, show. That's a good idea. <laughs> kind yeah. of my journey plans. Also, one thing we didn't really talk about. This is also going to be kind of. This kind of turned into mostly Q and A. It's not really going to be a structured Q and A every Sunday. It's yeah. more. It's like a hangout. It's more just a hangout. We're more yeah. just kind of trying to hang out. Like this was more of a Q and A vibe than we probably were planning on doing. Yeah. Uh, but there's going to be times where we're just going to like jam with you yeah. guys and just pick up our guitars. <laughs> The main point is we just want to have coffee with you guys yeah. every Sunday morning and just kind of hang. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's not going to be it's so much It's not serious. It's like not no. like anything, you know, like super structured. No, not at all. So, I mean, we'll, we'll definitely be answering questions every, sun, every Sunday, you know, stuff like this, guitar questions, coffee questions, whatever yeah. else. 
Um, but yeah, like in the future, it will be not always a Q and A. It'll be sometimes we'll jam, we'll play songs, we'll show mm -hmm. you what we're practicing and working on, stuff like that. You exactly. Know? That's it's just a hangout. Yeah, it's just a loosely based hangout, and like we didn't do a latte of jamming. Today. Yeah, we didn't. We I was like thinking. So. That's what I was thinking. I was like, let's grab our guitars for at least a <laughs> minute of jamming before before we like sign off. You know. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. But favorite no, chord. Okay. Oh, I was just gonna like pass it off. To oh, I mean, chord. I could go if you want. I, know I mean, I have like one in my head, but I feel like there's another one I'm like missing out on, but go ahead. Okay, I'll go first because I know mine. So my favorite chord is this variation of an E chord okay. right here. It's this open E. I don't know the proper name for it, but it's right here up on 7th and 9th fret. So you got 7th fret on the Ooh. A string and the 9th fret on the D and G. So literally an E major shape that you move to the 7th fret. Almost, but this goes up to the A. Wait, which one? Pointer finger goes up oh, to the A. Oh, pointer finger goes up to the A. Yeah, and then this goes... Pinky I and can't sorry. See my, bad. I got, my big old hands are in there. There you go, like this. Yes, like yes, like and that. Then you just strum all the strum strings. all the strings top down. Oh, that sounds so pretty. Doesn't it sound gorgeous? <clears throat> oh, I love that chord. There's so much you can do with it, and it's just. So pretty and big and open. I love playing. So I love incorporating Is this that. In your thing. atmosphere. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> I just I heard it right. I learned. Yeah. Did I just learn the opening chord? Yes. So it's in a different tuning. So it's a little bit different. <laughs> whenever you actually play it in the right tuning, and I don't know how to play it in the right tuning, but it's a little bit different. But that's the opening chord of in your atmosphere. If you oh, ever want to like play it. I love that. Something like that. And John Mayer's doing a little bit more picky stuff. Was that an that's... ACES 2 that you did after uh -huh. that? Yep. <gasps> okay, so let's let me do this again. So on the A here, and then it's like. Okay, so we have. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah, and then you can kind of almost um kind of you kind of kind of pick through the chord just a little bit. And it does this part. This is this is the other thing I love about oh this shape. Gosh. Not to kind of like totally just like take this question or whatever, but since we're talking about it, this is the other thing I love about this shape is you can move it all up and down the fretboard. So as an example, in this song, this shape right here, after like he's, it's I think it like kind of halfway. No, it's at the very end of the first verse. I think uh -huh. um, he does this. He goes. Oh, that's so cool. And that's just that same shape slid up, just up and down the fretboard. Of how I like to take the E major yeah. and I like to move it up to the third yeah. fret. Sometimes I'll do that with like chords, is I'll just like move them up a little bit, like move them up a couple of frets. Yeah, you um, can totally do it. And you can actually do that all up and down the fretboard too. That's so cool. You can do it just here, knowing it like your, your whole steps and your half steps really helps out with that. It does, yeah. it helps a lot. That's getting yeah. like fairly like in complex, theory a little but, bit. <laughs> the, yeah, it's getting into a little bit of theory, but just. It's not a cool yeah. options, but yeah, that's my favorite chord shape right there. Oh, I love that Isn't so that much. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I feel like that's going to be like in my top chords now. Nice. I love that. We'll have to Definitely. play around with that later. Thank you for teaching me that. That's yeah, cool. Of course. Got you. Um, one of my favorite chords, and this is like a basic chord, but I really love the A minor chord. Um, I find that a lot of songs that I love playing have A minor. Like they'll either start with A minor or they'll have A minor in it. And like I just really... Yeah. love that chord because it's like dark and mysterious and I, just, I love it a lot um but i love the asus 2. Yeah. asus 2 is really really oh, pretty i played that um what did i play it in i feel like i don't know if it was i was thinking of like um that casey musgrave song but i don't know oh slow burn yeah i think i think i played the asus 2 in that one And then there was also that there G is. shape. That yeah. See, that that's another chord that I really love. That one's cool, and that's a unique one. You don't see that a lot. It's some kind of variation. I'm not sure what it actually is called. I'm not sure either. It's in it was slow burn, some like, like, com like complicated name, but it's literally a C major. Yeah. And then you just move it up to the third fret. Yeah. Oh, that's in my top two. That's, that's like one of my favorite chords, and like that's the only time I've ever used it. But yeah. it's some kind of D variation, yeah. is what it is. But so yeah. A minor. But also ACES too because it's very like it's an airy chord. It's, it's very just, airy. Yeah. And 
and then of course like this one this one feels very airy too yeah like you know it has, it's very open it's very very open yeah. so i love those like really breathy airy open chords they're yes. just like atmospheric sounding kind of thing and yeah i love that so me too that's awesome that's cool i like that a lot and it's kind of cool too that a sus that goes a lot. So like, for example, something we were jamming on last night was The Other Side of the Door. And that song, uh, that has that has an A sus in it too. So a lot of times the way I'll play The Other Side of the Door, you play it capoed up. Oh yeah, I do. Um, you wanna jam on that? Yeah, let's jam on it. We can like do that as a kind of like on the yeah. way out kind of thing. That'd be cool. Yeah. All right, so I had that little drum intro thing. Um, but most of the time, like the way Michelle plays it and the way that Taylor plays it is capoed up to second fret. Mm -hmm. But what I like to do is I like to take those chords and I like to play them open without a capo. So I'll play that big E as the first mm -hmm. chord and then move that same shape down to second fret to a B shape. Sounds so good. <laughs> yeah, and then I got an F sharp minor up here, almost the same shape, we're just adding the minor in there. This isn't really a proper lesson, but just kind of show you. And then we go back down to that A sus2 that Michelle was just talking about. So what's cool is that our favorite chords kind of go together. Yeah. All have the you time. taught this down yet? I don't think I have. No. You know what we should do? Like should we do. should maybe do a tutorial teaching it the way you play it, and then I can do one teaching the way I play it. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. Maybe we should do that. Would you guys be into that? Yeah, let us know. That's what I like. The door. We love that we, song. Oh, we love it. We play yeah. that song all the time. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. All right. Let's you know, jam up for yeah. some. Okay. All right. Well, 
Oh, so fun. <laughs> That's, that's a good way to send it off. I think so too. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with yeah, us today. Yeah, it was super fun. Yeah. Was, we had a blast at this. Like I said, you know, we're going to do this once every Sunday morning at about 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Yeah. More on time yeah, this we'll time. So we time. made you guys wait for a little bit. Yeah. Um, I'm just but, working out that technical Yeah, just technical stuff. difficulties. We'll get that all locked out and stuff mm -hmm. for next week. Um, yeah. But yeah, we had a blast hanging with you guys. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And you know, like we said, it's a very loosely based, like yeah. hang out, literally having coffee and just chatting with you guys and, you know, and like teach you guys stuff too. And like answering, yeah. you know, like your guitar questions and things like that. And, yeah. um, next week it's going to be on Cody's channel, the yeah. groovy guitar dude. Yeah. So same time next Sunday, yeah. we'll see you there. Um, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, yes. groovy guitar dude. I'll put up a thing about it so you'll know about it the night before that we scheduled mm -hmm. out, but yeah. Looking yeah. forward to seeing you guys there. Yeah, thank you guys again so much for hanging out. Um, definitely make sure to go check out both of our vlogs. So yeah. um, if you you guys are already on my channel, so you might see that my newest video is a vlog and it's just like an update on mm -hmm. why I haven't posted a lot recently and same thing with Cody. Yeah. And he has a vlog. You'll kind of more so see a lot more in-depth stuff on his channel too. But yeah. um, we're doing a weekly vlog where we're sharing more um, of an in-depth kind of peek into like, you know, how we put tutorials together and like our lives and stuff like that. Yeah, and, a little bit more of a personal thing yeah. just to like, just, yeah, share what's going on with you guys. Exactly. But I know from my end, I'm going to have a lot more tutorials coming soon. I actually have some stuff that um, I have edited and ready to go. And I have some other tutorials that I am editing right now and working on, but I've been doing a lot of filming. Um, and so starting early this coming week, you guys are going to see a lot more tutorials coming your way. I'm so excited to get back into the swing of things. It's just feels really, really good. So the tutorials are coming back. I, I'm not like not doing tutorials. There are a lot of tutorials coming yeah. your way. So it's just like watch the vlogs to find out like why, you know, Things have been kind of slow recently with yeah. the tutorials, but um, on both of our ends, not just yeah, ourselves. I've been like, slow on tutorials too. Yeah, I feel like I, you've been jumping back into them a little bit more easily, but we've both been, yeah. Yeah, both just taking some time. We explain all that in the vlogs. Be yeah. sure those will be up. The vlogs, if you haven't seen the vlogs yet, we'll be posting those every Saturday morning on mm -hmm. both of our channels. We each have our own vlog, but it's kind of like, you know, it's a shared yeah. thing. Both of our channels, Saturday morning, 10 Central Standard Time, 10 a.m. Central Standard mm -hmm. Time. And then same thing on Sunday mornings, we'll be here with you guys live oh, streaming, wow. yeah. switching back and forth between our channels. Yeah. 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 So definitely check that out because we don't, we don't want to take up too much of your guys' time explaining like, you know, why, you know, things have been slow. So that's yeah, all that like taken it all care right of there. in the vlogs. Uh, feel free to go check those out. But yeah. thank you again for hanging out with us and yeah. we will see you guys very, very soon. Yeah. See you guys soon. Bye. Bye. Ending button. Oh no worries. Um, I think it's this. Click it. Uh, oh. are you sure you want to stop streaming? Yeah.